can't remember exactly when this was, but um, in conversation with uh, a major Greek critic, um, Yorgos Savidis, I happened to ask him, well, what younger poets, because we were discussing Kavafi, a, a poet who died in 1933, what younger poets is it worthwhile for me to pay attention to? And the one name he gave me was Kyriakos Chalambidis. And because I had great respect for Savidis, it made me uh, take his work seriously at that point. I think somewhere uh, Savidis had said that if he had to take one book to a desert island, it would be a book by Karolambidis. Ήθελα να μου να υποντήκα του σπιτιού μου τα δέσποτο σκυλί που μπαίνει στην αυλή μου και να μου να το φίδι και τσουκνίδα το δέντρο που μαράθηκε η σπασμένη πόρτα. Cyprus has an age-long tradition of popular poetry, which has been preserved by oral poets up to this day. However, with the introduction of printing in Cyprus in 1878, this oral tradition was gradually replaced by poetry in print, and whereas poets before remained largely anonymous, they soon came to be known by name. Vasilis Mikhailidis and Dimitris Libertis, two of the leading poets of this early period, were greatly influenced by the rich tradition of demotic songs and are now regarded as progenitors of Cypriot popular poetry. From the 1930s onwards, with the growth of the movement for union with Greece and the revolt against the British governor, poetry acquired a new character. Cypriot poets began to explore the world of profound emotions and draw on their deep sense of patriotism as a source of inspiration. This tendency became stronger after the liberation struggle against British rule in 1955 to 1959, and even more so after the military coup and the Turkish invasion in 1974. Despite the strong presence of poetry in Cyprus, the majority of Cypriot poets harbour a strong feeling of isolation in the knowledge that few people in the Greek-speaking world, let alone in Europe, give their work the attention it deserves. Πιστεύω ότι ο Κυριάκος Χαραλαμπίδης είναι ένας από τους σημαντικότερους σύγχρονους Έλληνες ποιητές. Έχει διαγράψει μία μακρά πορεία, έχει εκδώσει δέκα ποιητικά βιβλία μέχρι σήμερα. Τι είναι αυτό που συνιστά την ιδιαιτερότητά του έναντι της υπόλοιπης ελληνικής ποιήσης. Νομίζω ότι αυτό που συνιστά την ιδιαιτερότητά του είναι ότι στο επίκεντρο της ποιήσης του βρίσκεται η σχέση της ποιήσης με την ιστορία έτσι όπως η σχέση αυτή βιώθηκε μέσα από την συγχρονία του Κυριάκου Χαραλαμπίδη. Σημαδεύτηκε δηλαδή αυτή η συγχρονία από το γεγονός της τουρκικής εισβολής στην Κύπρο και τα όσα το ακολούθησαν μπορούμε να πούμε εξίσου τραγικά μέχρι σήμερα. So few read our work. So few know our language. We remain unvindicated, unsung in this far flung corner. These are the anguished words of Costas Montis, another major Cypriot poet. Unlike Montis, however, Kyriakos Haralambidis is not dismayed by the fact that his language is spoken only by a minority. In fact, he takes pleasure in this sense of isolation, turning the language barrier into a privilege instead. He responds with a stoic smile to Costas Montis, his old friend and mentor, with a poem. Στην Αραμαϊκή. 80 χρόνια έγραφα στην Αραμαϊκή. For 80 years I wrote in Aramaic. Who will redeem? Who will know what I studied with a child's technique? For 80 years. I wrote my songs in stone. The form of writing then had not progressed to papyrus, to skin. Στην Αραμαϊκή μιλούσαν από μνήμης 8,503 γυναίκες. Aramaic was spoken from memory by 8,503 women with embroidered fairy tales and starry wands, hair that squandered light, diamond-studded clasps of night, mountains that were nursed in song. 
In a little while, in less than 50 years, they'll ask me who you are, whence you came, and why you spoke a dead language, and how you conceived the amazing idea of a language so foreign. At the beginning of his career as a poet, Kyriakos Jaralambidis followed in Montes' footsteps, but he quickly developed his own voice without ever neglecting the traditional features of Cypriot poetry. He produced his first collection of poetry in 1961, when he was still a student of literature at the University of Athens. It was prefaced by Nikiforos Vretakos, who gave it the title First Source. In his review of the collection, another major Greek poet, Takis Papatsonis, wrote, Charalambidis has revived the withering and ailing state of modern Greek poetry. He has restored its moral foundations and instilled it with a new and spirited vision of humanity. I think what makes Kyriakos a world-class poet on the level of uh, William Butler Yeats, for example, of uh, Derek Walcott, Seamus Heaney, um, is the uh, profound spiritual seriousness um, that he uh, brings in his poetry about events that are of concern, people not just in Greece but beyond, issues of um, uh, ethnic conflict, of exile, of the imposition of, of political divisions in what was once a unified society, and the way that he's able to turn these concerns into really works of art, poems that are challenging, but that uh, attain a, a level of, of accomplishment and freshness um, that really do make them poems that are going to last. In the wake of the Turkish invasion, Kyriakos Haralambidis became an exile and a refugee in his own land. He composed a trilogy about the dramatic events, Ikean's Shore, Famagusta Queen City, Dome, all of which were met with widespread acclaim elevating him, at an early stage in his career, to the status of a Greek national poet. Famagusta Queen City, which was particularly commended, received the Poetry Award from the Academy of Athens. Ο Χαραλαμπίδης θα μπορούσε να χαρακτηριστεί εθνικός ποιητής. Δεν χρησιμοποιώ τον όρο αυτό αξιολογικά, αλλά τυπολογικά. Εννοώ δηλαδή ότι η ποιησή του έχει εκείνα τα γνωρίσματα τα οποία και κατά το παρελθόν διέκριναν τον τύπο του εθνικού ποιητή, σε μια εποχή που αυτός ο τύπος ποιητή έχει, μπορούμε να πούμε, εκπνεύσει για τα δεδομένα της ελλαδικής λογοτεχνίας, ενώ αντιθέτως στην περίπτωση του Χαραλαμπίδη αυτός ο τύπος παραμένει επίκερος και έγκυρος λόγω των εθνικών ιδιαιτεροτήτων που χαρακτήρισαν την Κύπρο. Δεν εννοώ ότι είναι ένας ποιητής ελληνοκεντρικός, ή εθνοκεντρικός. Μέσα από την πίεση του δηλαδή δεν διεκδικεί αυτό που θα λέγαμε το εθνικό δίκαιο, το να λειτουργήσει η πίεση του μια αντίπραξη ε, απέναντι στην τουρκική εισβολή ε, σε ένα καθεστώς ε, το οποίο ίδιος το αντιλαμβάνεται ως καθεστώς ε, αδικίας. Αυτό που ενδιαφέρει τον Χαραλαμπίδη θα έλεγα ότι είναι η πίεση του από εθνική να γίνει συνάμα οικουμενική και παγκόσμια ε, καθώς αναλογίζεται Ποιο είναι το νόημα της ιστορίας. Μια πόλη σου ζητάμε Αν είναι αυτή που ζήσαμε Τα ωραία μας χρόνια Turkish invasion in 1974, 
time and history came to a standstill for Jara Lambivis. The only thing that he believed could exist is what the poet himself called meta-history. In the collection that bears this title, his poetic world underwent a fundamental transformation, filling his poetry with dark undertones and enigmatic imagery. I, th I think um, the title of uh, one of his uh, more recent collections, uh, Meth Historia, um, which translates as post-history or perhaps meta-history, I prefer, by analogy with metaphysics, um, is very indicative of the way Kiriakos Haralambidis approaches history. Of course, the title of that particular collection, Meth Historia, um, though not etymologically but um, uh, connotatively, brings to mind also the Greek word methi, um, which, which means intoxication or inebriation. And I think in the historic poems, uh, one can sense very much uh, Haralambidis's intoxication with history in the sense that he wants to highlight um, the, the absurdities, the human dramas behind um, historic and mythical uh, persons and events. The room is dominated by Andinos in alabaster. His hair reveals it was adorned by a gold wreath. His languid and tender body leans with a girlish sweetness to hear the guide's words about Hadrian. Foolishly, he sacrificed his life's beginnings to present his future to his patron. Prosperous Hadrian at once had exquisite coins cut with his image, set up sanctuaries, everywhere erected splendid statues. Yet Andinos, despite all the fame he drank, now stands apart in the room and weeps. His only consolation is this statue, one of the most beautiful, so he hears. The um, invasion of Cyprus by the Turkish um, army in 1974 shook things up very much in his verse. He suddenly had to find a, um, a medium that would both continues to be a very personal kind of poetry, as he had been writing, but also that would engage with these broader issues. It gave him a breadth of vision, I guess, that is not uh, something I encountered again in mainland Greek poets who had not had to deal with this sort of, of um, culture-shaking event. Automatically gave him a desire to speak beyond the limitations of his island. And there we might think of another island poet like Yeats in Ireland or or um, Derek Walcott, the Caribbean poet um, from the small island of St. Lucia. I mean, the poems are full of um, sort of humanity and empathy. I mean, there is no bitterness or hatred that I can see in them anyway. It's very, very well hidden, you know. Um, I mean, he is just a man trying to find out, trying to figure out being alive and, and also trying to figure out how de best to deal with the uh, various bitternesses, or hardships rather than bitternesses of his life, both public and private, and admitting that through everything he has learned before that and through all the other voices of the past. This is a poem um, written um, uh, via a dream told by his friend, uh, Kyriakos' friend, Andreas Marangos, uh, the director and actor. Um, and both of them come from the Turkish side uh, of uh, Cyprus, but both of them have never gone back and refused to go back uh, is a kind of demonstration and refusing to recognize that the, uh, the, the Turkish uh, occupation. Um, but Ardana was the village where Andreas came from. Half of the country yard, not a stone of any of it was visible in the old days, glared blankly. That was just half the strangeness of the dream. Our good neighbours trellised grapevines looked towards our house. How could our neighbours go on with things when some foreigner parted in our yard? The strangers looked at him, raising their chins to the heavens, signalling no. 
he contrived on another occasion to enter the courtyard through a rip in the dream. He slipped in via the spare room. A Turkish woman was drawing water from the well. I didn't know any Turkish. Do you speak English? I asked her. I understand it. Is this my house? It is your house. And in my sleep I started crying tears of leave-taking. My sobs lifted me like a leaf in storm and I woke up Pilades. My bed was drenched. Did my dream have a leaky roof? You and I see it, feel it, live it. Our army wiped out. Not a ship, not a strip of land in view, not a single house, my friend. Αν ο λαός μας δεν μπορεί να αντλήσει απ' τα δυνά του τότε του δόθηκε αδικά μια τέτοια τραγωδία τότε του δόθηκε αδικά μια τέτοια Τραγωδία Of course, Kyriakos is um, very much a Cypriot poet um, by birth and language, um, by persuasion and also by subject matter. Um, but he's perhaps the only Cypriot poet that's become part of the larger Greek literary canon. Of course, one of his works, Methistoria, um, uh, was awarded the Greek State Prize for Poetry. And I think um, that's indicative of the fact that he's regarded very much as a Greek poet. Uh, and I know he himself likes to be thought of as a Greek poet. When he wrote, he had a, a, a much broader audience in mind that I think the, the average uh, contemporary Greek poet had, who m was predominantly writing to his fellows within Greece itself. So I think, you know, where, whereas we can think of Athenian poets as being metropolitan writers, um, I would not call uh, Kyriakos a metropolitan writer, but he was a cosmopolitan writer. Um, and again, um, this is something that broke him allowed him to break be beyond the language barriers of writing in a minor language. The publication of his collection Dokimin in the year 2000 established Kyriakos Charalambidis' reputation as a highly acclaimed poet on a par with other contemporary Greek poets. In the Cypriot dialect, the word Dokimin refers to a heavy boulder that young men try to lift as a means of proving the strength of both their body and spirit. One could say that Kyriakos Charalambidis has raised his own Dokimin as Greece turns to look at the strength of his poetic voice. I drew close to see who I am and the sort of land I hail from. I entered and stood in the bitter house beside a pit. A woman in a headscarf brought me water, offered me something sweet. I thanked her. She also plucked fruit from the garden of my cherished house, shining fruit of all kinds, diffuse with lips that were real and limbs steeped in kindness. I thanked her, grew bold and asked to see inside my house, if that was all right. Of course it's all right, she said. You can even look in the bedroom. Let's leave it there lest she grow angry. All I hope that from time to time I might have her permission to see again the sweet sight of my cherished house. Interspersed, however, between these um, Cypriot poems and historical poems 
are, are other poems which are often more um, surrealistic, more playful, sometimes often point in vignettes uh, on human life and life in the city. This is from his first book, which came out in the 1960s. Um, again, it's almost, almost a fairy tale. Um, this one is called The Queen's Window. <clears throat> I leaned out the window and, and uh, beheld the beauty of the plain, and I thought of her story. She leaned out the window and watched with some alarm as her crown fell off. Um, something else that I find in this poetry that, uh, that took me a while to, I guess, become sensitive to was uh, a certain sense of humor he has that uh, is very characteristic of him, um, but it's not really a kind of humor that I think Americans are quick to pick up on. Um, so it's something that you have to, as a translator, you have to kind of try to hit the right tone in English, uh, even though it may be um, um, hard to domesticate in terms of our sense of humor. He's not, of course, the first Greek poet to use um, uh, references to Greek um, history and mythology in this way. Um, other more well-known uh, Greek poets, and I'm thinking particularly of Seferis and Kavafis, um, have used history and mythology in this way. Um, I think there's a very definitely a poetic dialogue going on between Charalambides and these other poets, um, but it is a poetic dialogue, it's not imitation. Um, Charalambides has his own uh, particular and unique poetic voice. Because there's nothing unique, there's nothing, hardly anything in the, in the, in the world unique. In the world of art, certainly, everything has probably been done before, but it's the way he remakes it in his own character into his own world, makes the Hellenic world, makes the world of Kavafi and Aletus and Severus and the world of modernism, of the world of, say, his learning in English language poets like Pound and Eliot, and his general learning of history and, and archaeology. Η κυρία Αριστοδήμου στον κεραμικό, αδιμονώντας να τον περπατήσει. Eager to walk round it, not having seen it before, she now strides into the site. Τη συμβολή φιλίου αρχαιογνώστου. She annuls the offer of a classicist friend concerning a timely guided tour, and the keramikos is now superfluous. Somewhere nearby is her stele, perhaps in the foundations of Themistocles' wall. Of course, his language includes much more than a smattering of Cypriot dialect. Um, but what really impresses me about his language is that it includes all the historical phases of the Greek language. Um, he draws on the Homeric epics, on the lyric poets, on classical writers, um, Hellenistic poets, the Koine Greek of the New Testament, the Byzantine hymnographers, um, right down to contemporary uh, Demotic Greek and, and um, everyday slang. And um, that, of course, presents particular problems for translators of his work into English, where um, in English we don't often have corresponding phases of the English language. Το ερώτημα αν και κατά πόσο η πίεση του Κυριάκου Χαραλαμπίδη θα μπορούσε να βρει αποδοχή ε, από ένα ευρύτερο κοινό ε, και κυρίως από το εξωελλαδικό κοινό μέσω μεταφράσεών της ε, είναι ένα δύσκολο ερώτημα με την εξής έννοια. Φαίνεται αυτή η πίεση να έχει ορισμένα χαρακτηριστικά που την καθιστούν απρόσφορη στο να έχει διεθνή απήχηση και ποια είναι αυτά τα χαρακτηριστικά. Χαρακτηρίζεται από έναν υψηλό δείκτη, θα έλεγε κανείς, εντοπιότητας. Γιατί προϋποθέτει η πίστη του Χαραλαμπίδη ένα κοινό το οποίο είναι εξοικειωμένο με αυτή την παράδοση. Ε, μπορεί να παρακολουθήσει τα ίχνη αυτού του ε, πάρα πολύ μεγάλου εκτεταμένου διαλόγου που γίνεται με κείμενα αρχαιοελληνικά, βυζαντινά, νεότερα, το δημοτικό τραγούδι. Ε, ωστόσο, αυτά που φαίνονται να είναι οι αντενδείξεις, μπορούμε να πούμε, στη σχέση του Χαραλαμπίδη με ένα ε, διεθνές κοινό, 
Νομίζω ότι μπορούν να γίνουν και τα, ε, τα, τα βασικά στοιχεία του, της προσέλκυσης αυτού του κοινού. Ε, ακριβώς επειδή ε, ο Χαραλαμπίδης ε, καταφέρνει ε, το τοπικό και το, το γλωσσικά οικείο, το δικό του γλωσσικά οικείο, το οποίο είναι μοιραία περιορισμένο για ένα ευρύτερο κοινό, ε, να το καταστήσει ε, αισθητικά παγκόσμιο και καθολικό. So what uh, I guess what uh, what the saving grace in his work beyond uh, those linguistic challenges is the fact that they are so rich in images um, that um, even if if the material is, is material is lost, uh, secondary resonances uh, can't be conveyed. Uh, the images come through quite strongly. And one last poem I'd like to read, which is a very tender poem, and one I know that um, Kyriakos is particularly proud of. Um, it describes the moment that um, Marie Antoinette, so I was informed by Kyriakos, is about to have her head chopped off, and the executioner halts for a moment just before um, he executes her, as he smells um, the fragrance of her perfumes and also describes the moment just as he's chopped off her head where more fragrances are released. In Gilotina, just as he was about to chop her crystalline neck, he stumbled on her perfume of cedar, lavender, citrus, rose petal, jasmine. Vanilla, irida, and in addition released vanilla, iris, and sandalwood. It may be coincidence, but uh, Kyriakos reminds me of some major poets in English, and again, that is, that is the focus of my studies, um, who are from islands. I've written about um, Derek Walcott, I've written about um, William Butler Yeats, um, and um, both of them, and I should, another Irish poet I'll mention is Seamus Heaney, also from the island of, uh, from the island of Ireland. Um, uh, all three Nobel Prize winners, major figures who have somehow, again, broken out of the, the um, boundaries of their, of their small islands to speak to a world audience. I think that's something that Kiriakos has managed to do um, effectively. Um, and, um, well, I don't know whether a, a Nobel Prize is, is uh, in the future, but um, I certainly think he should be considered for one um, as a poet who has um, transformed his art in order to engage uh, major issues, um, both on a political scale, but also, also um, in spiritual terms. Because different poets have different importances for different reasons, but I think that off the top of my head, in the case of Kyriakos, he, he's from Cyprus, Cyprus is a place of antiquity, coming up to the present, has a lot of old problems. Uh, and also then, of course, because he's, a da he's articulating that world, he's articulating his private world out of it, and he's articulating the public world. And that, of course, eventually becomes universal. I mean, you know, the troubles in, in, in between Greek Cyprus and uh, Turkey uh, are the troubles in Israel between the Palestinians and the Israelis, are the troubles between the Protestants in Northern Ireland and, 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 and the people in the Republic of Ireland, are the troubles in uh, Sri Lanka. So it becomes a universal thing also in his public poems. Um, and then, of course, he's coming out of um, a, a great, uh, the great Greek world. And, of course, he's, he's got that direct access out of, out of, out of that authenticity uh, in his language, and in the Greek language. I kuri tu dipilu, alfa, ke mu legen imana mu, ton adelfosu, and my mother said to me, take good care of your brother. He may be an awesome size, but he's still green and knows nothing of life's ways. I gave her my word. Yet in the midst of battle we both fell. I on the right, he on the left with his horse that became a lion upon his tomb, while I'm adorned now by a sphinx.